What's going on YouTube? It's Marvin here and I'm about to bring to you another basketball POV video. One that's a little bit more interactive where I go into a little bit more detail on my settings, my setup, how I do things and why I do them. Of course, if you're new here, please consider subscribing. You'll get much more content like this. This is definitely the direction that I usually go in. Feel free to listen along, change all your settings, get your camera ready for the next time you go out to shoot basketball. Let me take the friction from your so guys very quick disclaimer i already had this video finished if you're subscribed then you probably would have seen my previous videos where i had issues with my m1 macbook 14 inch pro i'm happy to tell you that this is a brand new machine now but that came at a cost long story short i had finished this video saved it to my desktop because I was making it in a two part sequence. I thought, all right, let me move on to the next. And unfortunately I lost all my data. Well, most of my data, I managed to recover quite a lot, but as you'll see in the video, some of the clips are out of sync ever so slightly. You'll still be able to understand and grasp what I'm saying, but it's just not the final edit that I wanted. So before we get into it, do you guys like my current setup? It seems like I'm always getting videos done in center parts. I should probably you know just hire a room out and get all my content done but yeah let's get into cameras and what i'm using so currently i'm using my a7 IV. doesn't really matter what bodies you're using and you don't actually have to use two like i did in the video either i must say after using two especially when i'm making a pov video it's hard to switch between the two i definitely prefer the days where i was using one so don't feel like you're missing out on anything anyway the gear that i'm using like i said a7 IV that i'm currently recording on I've got my A7R4, I've got a 50 millimeter, and I've got a 135 millimeter here. With the R4, you've got a lot more megapixels than what you have with the A7 IV. Online, I get a load of questions. Oh, could you show me this with the, how the A7 IV performs with the 50 mil? That comes up quite a lot. I'm happy to somewhat show off that content in the future potentially or highlight things if there are specific questions that I feel need to be answered. However, for this, if you've got a camera that has more megapixels, try and put that cam or try and pair that camera up with um, the shorter focal length. And the reason why I say that is when you're on the court and you're shooting, you might not be able to frame it right with a 50 mil, but having the extra crop space that the 61 megapixels gives you allows you to completely change that photo and have uh, more advantages from shooting that way. And knowing that with the 135, it punches in so tight, you're not gonna have to crop that much. So that's why I had it in that, that way, in that direction. Let's head over to the gym and uh, take it from there. Alright guys, you know me and being fashionably late, here we go, but I have done some work in the background to figure out my previous issues. Right, so I've hooked up my phone to my laptop, which has given me uh, an internet connection, which I didn't have before. When I was trying to tether, that was, that was causing some issues, that's now sorted. Also, this is why I wear a grey watch strap. It actually seems to be balanced pretty well for in here, because I think the last time I shot, was whilst I was here, so that's all good. White balance is all good. I'll show you how I do it. So I've got a shortcut for my white balancing on my BIM button. I've got, I've got three customs, one, two, and three. I'm gonna go to set. I'm gonna set that, put my watch in front, press the middle button. It's gonna read, read the gray that's there. It's gonna give me the right white balance. On this right here, I'm a little bit overexposed, so that's because I've got the 51 two. I'm shooting at one, two. So now I'm going to drop my ISO. So if you look here, stops go 1.2, 1.4, 1.6 and 1.8. So if I'm usually shooting at 1.8 and my ISO is at 640, that's one, two, three. That's a full stop. So from 640, I can go from 640, 500, 400 and 320. That's a full stop. So all my presets should work in the same way. My tethering camera is gonna be the 135. I'm gonna get this all connected up via USB-C. Good luck with that. Thank you. I've tried it a couple of times now. So 
Should be should be all good to go this time. Yeah. One of the massive problems that I had before was I was trying to sort out the, the software to make it sever. It wouldn't work because I had Google Drive running in the background. Such yeah. a random thing. Refresh this because I've closed Google Drive. We've got the camera and it will just say connecting, it will go straight through. Before it was causing loads of problems and saying it won't connect. And so you select remote from your camera? You yeah. Don't, you don't go Lightroom tethered and go remote? So with Sony's they don't allow it. Really? You had to go capture one. That's why I had capture one before. Oh. Yep, yep, pain in the ass. All right, auto import, enable auto import. Tune on high plus, guys. There we go. Something to get us started. Nice, good pass. Up down. There we go. Good start. Right, so on my laptop over here, all the photos that I take with my A7 IV are going to come through on the screen. And uh, I'll, I'll just quickly open up Twitter. As I take these photos, you've got an auto import in Lightroom. You've also got the presets running on there straight away. So let's go on to Ipswich Basketball's page. I can see what's uploading as it comes. Whichever photo I like, I'll probably end up putting a little crop on it. Make a quick export and with the quality, I don't really need to export very high. So I'll probably leave it about 30 to keep my size down. Straight into, straight into Twitter, go to my photos and then upload with a quick caption saying, here we go. So let's quickly talk about settings. We've sorted out white balance, 1.2, ISO 320 on this, 640 on this, 640 shutter on both cameras, and we're ready to go. So with this camera, I won't be able to upload immediately and do all that kind of stuff, but it's still useful for later on having all these photos. So I'm shooting quite wide with the 50, of course, because I'll be able to crop later. Go. I'm trying to do a lot of bursting with this, with this as well. So something that I've said before in previous videos, this might go over some people's heads or they might not understand. This flexible, expandable spot, um, I literally just watched one of North Border's videos today where he was uh, realizing how to use it or he's saying that he just found out. Now this isn't to say anything like, oh, he should have known because he's this guy. But it's, it's, it's funny how not everyone does know about it. So it's super useful. Um, you can literally half press, hold on to your subject and it will just track it for you. So let me move this closer to the GoPro so you can see what I'm talking about. If I take that player for example, can you see how it's, it's red? That's my normal box. But then as I half press, it goes green. Wherever she goes, I'm gonna hold my finger onto that. Wherever she goes, it will just hold on. So we just got a massive burst of photos there, which I think I'll use later for another video where I've shown you guys um, some, some motion tricks that have been used with a, good, a lot of good social content creators now. So hopefully that, that, that burst should help me with, with creating that. It's quite good. Pav's got the best spot. We've got a good spot there. I keep getting blocked here. Nice. I keep getting blocked here. I moved away from the ref side to now get blocked on this side of the players. <laughs> Can never get it right. So to speak of that effect that I was talking about, I, I posted a reel on it recently, just as a trial. That was another moment where I could use it. Oh, oh put the ball in. So yeah, the, the, the trick of it is to use a lens that's a little bit wider. So I'm gonna try out my 50. Um, and hopefully, hopefully get, we get more different players just bringing the ball up.
Nice. So what you can do as well is if you know that you've got some Twitter handles to throw in there, um, just copy and paste them. You know, have them copy and pasted. That's something once again that you can do with preparation. Um, something that I've not done once again. But forgive me, guys. Forgive me. Awa! actually finding that my results are quite bright and that's because I've accidentally put my ISO to 1000. That would explain things. So I'm just going to dim it down, dial it down a little bit um, and go from there. So let's export one of these photos I've quickly done. Run into Twitter, got my hashtags there, whacking the photo. We should, we should say something about the energy here I think. Ipswich lead 17 to 16. There you go. So you guys can check out Ipswich Basketball, their Twitter page, just to see what I've put up. It'll give you an understanding of, of how things are happening. <clears throat> oh! Don't die. You all right? Yeah, yeah. But don't worry, I'm taking... Oh, my God. I was going to say, I'm going to take out some bits. She clearly wants them in. Another thing which I forgot to mention, guys. If you're running a two-camera setup like I am... I always miss a shooter. If you're running a two-camera setup like I am, try and make sure that you get the times to align because um, mine, mine are out of sync. And it's a pain in the ass when... Uh, you're trying to get all your photos in order and um, yeah, they're just out. So that's another thing. At the start of the session, every couple of weeks, line up the times. Let's have a quick look through what we've taken. We'll quickly resize this. Quick export with previous. Run into Twitter. We'll caption it ups and downs. 33 to 29. Attach your picture quickly. And upload. Back to shooting.
So the reason why I'm staying on this side is to get some of the, um, the opponents. So it's always nice to mix it up. Also, it gives me a chance to take some photos from behind and defensively. First time I got to fill up the buffer. end of the third I'm gonna grab all my stuff which I should probably start prepping for now and then we're gonna to go to our team's scoring side which is over there by the crowd ideally you want to be in that corner just so that you're away from the refs as I mentioned you will figure out which side the refs usually stay on and in on this court uh, it's usually over on the left side and yeah left side for both sides so if you're if you're looking from under the rim
Get in there. Excuse me. What, what was the score, please? Um, 66 to 81 to no. Thank you. Seventy-eight, eighty-six. Oh, two minutes. Two-point game. Ooh. Thank you for watching people. As you could clearly hear at the start of the video, super excited to tell you all of my settings. But as I kind of finished with that, I just got into doing what I was doing and 
ultimately turned into a spectator at the end. You could see it got really close. I must say when I was shooting, it was quite hard to get the results that I usually get, like in action shots. I felt like looking back and reviewing them, you can definitely tell that I was trying to do something and it was taking me away from my usual results. You would only know that if you saw my usual results when, when shooting basketball photography. I must say having the camera up to your eye um, and in the viewfinder allows you to stay engaged with the game but shoot at the same time. So yeah, having the camera up to my eye and then keeping this eye open allows me to, like like I said, spectate and just shoot whenever I need to. So once again, I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope it's taught you loads of things. But I've made another video and it's sitting right here and that'll teach you how to do the effect. I'll see you in the next video.